Okay, and this is a SwitchBot hub for a SwitchBot a Mini that could be integrated as the uh, Wi-Fi uh, controller for Bluetooth devices uh, for the SwitchBot only. And um, the problem with that, I cannot find any integration with the Smart Life or Smart uh, things. So uh, to me, it's really uh, only manual control uh, for the device. So it didn't really. Uh, work for my purpose, so, but you can uh, go ahead and check those two wherever you like. I, I'm gonna post the links for both of them in the description below. But uh, what I like about SwitchBot is the um, I can integrate, and I'll show you guys how I put it in and connect it to the C6 tank to uh, be able to turn on and off display and to be able to see on uh, simply just by running. Um, the camera right next to it, I could just simply uh, turn it on and off right here. So let's jump into it, the installation and the process. Okay, so and welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody have a good day. Today video gonna be about a finger boat. I mean, finger boat for the switch. So what it does is basically pushes down uh, the switch mechanically uh, to turn on and off devices and we'll be using for C6 tank, uh, also with the finger boat hub. Uh, so what hub does is, uh, the boat is actually a Bluetooth device. So I, I didn't find any Wi-Fi boats just like that. So uh, it's only available in Bluetooth. Um, for This is for Smart, Smart Life application or Tuya app, which I have integration with the power supply, with the, uh, temperature sensors and all, all, all kind of stuff. And they're also 20% discount coupon, which is a great price. And then the finger boat hub is only $23 to compare with the switch boat, uh, which is probably uh, one of the, um, the other one on the market. There are quite only a few uh, that's available like that. And at this switch boat that I already had I didn't find any of the integration, even though they sell hub. Uh, so the price on the 28, there's no, this, I don't see discount on it, but also when you buy uh, the hub, if you need to buy uh, Wi-Fi hubs, there are several options there, but that hub price is um, a lot more. I believe it's $35 trying to find that, uh, gee. Okay, so let's let's go back. On the switch boat, let's see if we can. Um, supposed to be a hub just right here. Okay, so you could do use this kind of uh, hub second generation. It's a it's a thermometer and use like a remote control for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi compatible. Uh, and that price that's not available currently. And we also could get um, the other one that I've got. Let's see, let's just search for the switch bot hub here. All right, so this is the uh, Bluetooth hub for um, Smart Life and for uh, Tuya, I guess, app uh, to be able to control Bluetooth devices. So this hub controls, uh, should be connected to internet. This way I can control from internet with this uh, finger bot uh, and try to use this or automations. This switch bot is similar to, I mean, switch bot is this device which uh, controls them through this hub, but I don't like that I cannot connect and automate this based on my uh, power usage and stuff like that. So what I'm trying to do for this uh, C6 thing, uh, play with this and try to do automation. So I'm gonna connect this to network and we'll see how it works. All right, so I have my finger bot uh, right here. Sorry, it's a little noisy here. I'll be using the 3M tape. Just gonna attach it right here at the tank, right across this push button. And I can test it, by the way, before doing, uh, just to make sure uh, this thing is working, okay? So there is, a, what's cool about it, there is a push button just right here that you can press, uh, and let's activate uh, this finger bolt, which you don't have this feature on the switch bolt. So on the switch bolt, you can activate from your phone, but there is no like a manual push button, right? So 
So anyways, I think it's a cool feature because if you come here, you don't need to reach there. You can just press right on top of this uh, finger bowl. Just when it's here, I can just come uh, without the phone, press here and activate it right there, the press button. And I could see uh, the temperature of the thing uh, when, when I'm here. So I just put this 3M tape on the back, by the way, the battery is actually uh, com uh, compartment here at the bottom, so you can still take the battery out while it's uh, attached to the thing. So it should be no problem replacing this battery. So let me get this uh, sticky tape. This is pretty heavy duty uh, tape that I use. Uh, very safe. It's a block tape, 3M tape. Uh, I got it from Home Depot. Cut it out. A piece here, and we'll put it in. All right, so I cut the piece, square piece here, no rectangular. So we're gonna remove this uh, tape, and then all we gotta do just attach. Make sure the surface is super clean, so it will last when you attach it. Make sure it's right on the center spot. Okay, right there. Also, what I found in the app, there is adjustment of uh, in percentage how far this should go. So right now, I think it's set to 50%, but I think it goes all the way. I'm not sure why it says 50%, but see how cool it is. All I gotta do is just press, it's activate and press the uh, unit. Also, there is a settings for how many seconds uh, from zero to, I didn't look at the maximum, but Pretty sure you don't need more than like 10 seconds, but uh, there is adjustments to three, five uh, every second you can add there in the app uh, every time you activate it. Now I didn't find the double option like what's for C16 to restart, but uh, we can program this and have it click twice. So for example, after power loss, so one thing is just to check the temperature. I can go in the app and click and using the hub through Wi-Fi, even if I'm not home. That's the most important part, and look at the temperature of the thing. But when I am uh, wanted to restart, for example, if the power outage, and then the power comes back, and I want this automatically to turn the thing on. So there is a little bit of the tweaks I need to do and play with that, but I'm pretty sure it's possible, so I'll have to play with this mode. Uh, by the way, the power loss only on the tank only like for a few minutes. It does not turn the tank off. I already tested. Like if you unplug it, wait a minute, and then plug back in, it will start uh, pump start working again. But it probably if it's longer than a minute or two, I forgot what's exactly time. But it will eventually, after restarting the resetting the power, it will not start the pump will not start automatically working so you will need to press two times you need to wait in order to shut off you'll have to press one and then press and wait now it stopped see in order to start mining you will have to press one and it start the pump i don't know if you heard the sound but display needs to be on so it's almost like you have to press one for a turn on display and the second press to turn on the pump if it's stopped. Okay, in order to stop the pump, you need to long press uh, after you turn display, then you wait for two or three seconds. So really, I don't need the feature to, uh, to turn it off. I don't see when I do need to turn it off the pump. Unless I need to cut the power off, I can cut it uh, from our, my power supply remotely. So this feature is really uh, only to turn on device and I need to be able to click twice, double click. So basically one and then one to start. Okay. Now, how are we gonna monitor the, uh, I have this camera here sitting right across. And so I will see on the camera my temperature there as well. So the only left to do is really play with, and my hub, over here is connecting the Bluetooth hub that controls connected to Wi-Fi already so everything ready to go I just need to get this uh, figured out how to make that double press 
in case of the power outage. All right, so let's go check on the uh, on the computer. All right, so I'm back to my computer. Just want to show you guys what I did on my uh, screen here. This is the uh, Smart Life. I added the uh, Bluetooth getaway. Oops, sorry. So this is a Bluetooth getaway uh, Wi-Fi connected. So this way I can control anywhere from anywhere in the world, basically where I have internet connection and just click here. And this will activate this finger boat, which is a switch boat or whatever you call it. That just a mechanical device that just press the button. That's the only way to turn on the screen on C6, okay? So I'm on my computer, this camera fence facing this uh, screen and I'll show you right here. So I'm gonna press uh, right there and activate the boat. So 49 degrees, let me zoom in on this camera uh, right here so you guys could see it's 50 degree now. So it's kind of going back and forth. Uh, the temperature, it's a little, maybe not clear, but it's clear enough to see what the temperature of the tank. Now, I also created this uh, the automation here to turn back C6 tank. You could see that. So what I did is I, I did one click, then two seconds delay, and then the second click. So basically it will click two times after power back on on my KS5L on, on one of my miners uh, restored. I haven't tested yet, but uh, I will need to basically turn off the power, make sure this uh, pump is off and then restore the power and see if this is going to connect the pump uh, back again. So that's the only test, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work. Um, there is uh, other settings that I can do it based on the other devices um, status. So really, I just need to get the status when the power back on, which kind of hard uh, with when the power back on, everything needs to connect back first your Wi-Fi uh, and it may take a while. So I, I created this delay in action 10 seconds uh, before it will uh, start activating this thing. Maybe it's not enough, so I will have to play and adjust that. So anyways, uh, that's it for this video. I, I guess if you have C6 tank and you wonder how to, at least to check your uh, temperature there remotely when you're there, you have the camera, let's say, and you just press on your device here to activate. It will press and show you uh, the temperature here on the screen right there. Uh, and this is in my mining shed, if you remember. And I am at my computer far away, so I'm not connecting Bluetooth. It's it's running through Wi-Fi. Just to show you guys, uh, the Bluetooth will not work more than like 15 or 25 feet. Uh, and I'm about 50 feet away or more. and. I'm working through the Wi-Fi, through this blue shed. I mean, the Bluetooth gateway, which is connected to internet right now. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And I'll be um, getting another video. How did I get, uh, let me show you the temperature in tank. When you get uh, the older version, it's usually runs uh, automated to 44 degrees. Uh, between like 44 and 46 roughly and that will make your KS5L uh, drop your uh, hash rate. So the KS5L runs better when your temperature of the chips closer to like 60 between 65 and 85 or something like that. So close to 90, not over 90. I noticed going over 90 degrees is actually reducing your hash rate. Uh, so I'll uh, stay tuned. I will show how to increase uh, the tank temperature in your uh, C6 tank unless you already have ACFC function, which I don't have. Uh, that's a newer version. It may have already settings to adjust your temperature and increase the temperature of the tank. So right now I don't have that and I manually uh, do that and I will show you guys how to do this in the following videos, probably in a few days or so, because right now it's pretty much if you have KS5Ls or KS5M, uh, they do not perform with the low temperature with the 44. You need to get closer to 50, 48 to 50 degree, like what I have right here. See, it's 49. Trying to get between 49 and 50 is actually works probably the best at the round. 49 degree in the tank, uh, not higher than 51 for KS5L. 
However, KS5M function better uh, is when the temperature a little bit higher because I'll show you my temperature on these chips is a little bit lower uh, right here. So when I lower the temperature to 49, 48, uh, KS5L, see like 49 here, KS5M, not too hot because it's too cold for the chip. So I have to figure out how to uh, keep two of these uh, miners in the same tank and have different, and this is overclocked to 670. So it's 12, 370 version of the overclocks and still the chips temperatures are a lot lower. So I may need to play and try to increase my uh, overclocks, but uh, I don't know if that's gonna take it or not. So I will be slowly going up and checking the power usage. Power consumption right now is uh, what I have is about uh, on my first uh, initial uh, May batch is a lot lower. It's almost like 180, uh, 170 watts lower for some reason. You could see 3261 overclocked to the same firmware in 3430 on the June batch. So the June batch with the new power uh, fans. So I don't know what they did there, if it's a different chips or what, but they do run... Uh, differently on the same clocks uh, as far as the power consumption and performance okay and then the ks5m uh usually a lot less at the 3350 i am running uh, a little bit over clock testing on the uh, overclock that's gonna come out soon so that's it for this video guys i hope you like it uh, so just check it out for c6 tank again this is the feature you can add and check your temperature right there while you're away from your uh, miner. You can still like, just to make sure everything works fine. If you notice something that's your miner, obviously it, you could same way check your temperatures by just looking at, um, at your remote web GUI and see like right here, this board, uh, the temperature, the lowest, that's pretty much exactly same as the tank temperature, but kind of nice to have that and be able to turn back the pump back on. So that, that would be the main use is to turn that back, have this robot go in and out and press twice and potentially turn uh, the power back on as well. Not just checking temperature, but also uh, by pressing second time, turn the power of the pump. Uh, if it was disconnected, then you need to restart. Let's say it was the power usage out, outage, and uh, you could manually, at least now you can manually turn it on if the after function doesn't work and you can turn on back your uh, all your power. Um, I mean, all your miners, you can set like after re restore, you can just have it, uh, set to off and then you restore them and then you go back and turn on your uh, tank pump. So just to be safe, uh, make sure don't run your ASICs without the pump running. So after power restoration. So hopefully that feature will add a nice uh, remote control of that tank. Add it nicely when you're on the way, when you're traveling, when you're out of, uh, out of your home and you need to get uh, some sort of your um, some sort of the information and be able to restart your device. Okay, thank you guys, and we'll see you on the next one.